unique soul signature. Oh yeah, there you go. Finding our unique soul signature so, so that we can actually live with passion, with purpose, with joy, within our unfolding life experience. I love the lyrics of this song because it really reminds us of how complex life is and how we really don't know how and where and in what direction our life is going to unfold. Isn't that the truth? That's the truth for me. I've been there 68 years, and stuff keeps unfolding in very peculiar ways. And so every day I get an opportunity to embrace that. So this whole month, we've been trying to figure out what does my unique expression, my soul signature look like? What does my spiritual journey look like? What unique contribution do I have to give? And part of the invitation is to embrace who we are, and this is a big thing, as we are. Who we are as we are. And allow life, whatever's going to show up, to unfold around us and to be part of our journey, however that looks, on every level, on every level. So we have to be willing to be open to life showing us in our bank accounts, in our bodies, in our relationships, you know, in world events. We have to be willing to be present with whatever shows up. That's part of the deal so that we can actually cultivate the capacity to live life from that place of passion and joy and purpose that John Denver's lyrics were talking about. Now this is a cosmic joke. We always pick our top topics at least a month in advance. So we're going all the way back to the, you know, probably um, October, sometime in October. And you know, five Sundays, and, and we looked at Panache to say's book. We went, oh, okay, well, we'll talk about unfolding, this idea of trusting the universe. Well, wouldn't you just know it? Wouldn't you just know it? Little did we know we're going to be living as community and as your ministers, we're going to be living this topic firsthand. This embracing the unfolding whatever life has to show us. See, in this concept of what we talked about earlier of adding a location, shifting. What does this, what's it going to look like for us, you see? Because you know what? Sometimes when life unfolds around us, it's a disruption. Have you noticed that? Yes. Yes, and I love what our author tells us. He says, you know what? No matter what, life continuously unfolds around us and it continues to reveal new things to us along the way. So every time something new happens, we get to go, oh, you. Oh, okay, I get to embrace you now. It reveals itself to us and it's our job to be present with that thing to try to see what is it telling us. Life unfolds and brings us new opportunities to expand and grow if we take it that way and don't get frozen in fear. Don't, you know, collapse and get paralyzed by whatever that thing is. A.H. Almas, one of my very famous or favorite authors, says, the entire universe is being created anew in every instant. You know, sometimes we think we've got it wired. We think, ah, yep, this is it. I'm there, you know, aha, Whew, finally, got it, got it, got it going. You know, we sit back and go, yeah, I like it like this. And then all of a sudden, just about the time we're going, ah, what happens? Bam, something happens again to us, right? Isn't that the truth? Something shows up and we're going, oh, okay, one more thing to embrace. You know, and we think this is it, but no, not yet, not yet. Something unexpected shows up to help us along our journey to embrace one more thing that's unfolding in front of us. So I picked this image of the monkey and the uh, elephant, and actually I'm both, and I know you are too, yeah? You know, that, that monkey who has the high hope of catching another monkey on the trapeze, and all of a sudden you look up and it's an elephant? Ever been there? Ever been there? And then... You're the elephant, you know, this big thing is happening, and all of a sudden you're hoping that you've got another elephant to catch you that's strong enough to hold you, and all of a sudden you look up and, oh my God, it's a little tiny monkey. And you're hoping, you're hoping, you've got this holy hope that it's all going to work out. Yes? Yes. That's why I picked this image, because what I, what I know about my own journey is that I've got to give myself permission to be authentic, to be open, to be honest, and to be present with whatever unfolds in the moment. 
to be my most authentic self means, and this is true for the news we shared about our added location, to be authentic enough to honor my human meltdowns. Got any human meltdowns going on? In any area of your life when, when things don't work out just the way you thought they were, where you feel overwhelmed, you know, where, you know, for me, I, Glenda and I did a dialogue a couple of weeks ago and, and I had to cry because Glenda sort of hit one of those hot buttons. She says, I don't want to make you cry. And I went, well, then stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> then don't mention this and I won't have to cry. Right? Because I got some family stuff going on around some custody issues and stuff. Stuff's going on, right? And so I was a little fragile around the, around the edges. And so then this opportunity unfolds where we're going we're gonna to move common ground. Are you kidding me? we got to move our community someplace else. We can't do services at Golden Circle anymore. And you know what? It was a straw that broke the camel's back. Normally when I knelt down, I was telling Carol, she said, thank you for being authentic. I said, I had to be authentic because I had a public meltdown. How are you going to hide a public meltdown, right? I had a meltdown in front of some folks. Normally, I melt down in private at my house, get over it, and move on. But this was public, so I have to honor the fact that sometimes we have to embrace the idea that when this stuff shows up, no matter how spiritual we think we are, we're going to melt down. Yes? Okay. You know, say to yourself, my inner self was saying, I cannot do this again. I cannot create yet another sanctuary. I can't build another meditation garden. I can't, I can't, I can't. Too hard. I want to throw in the towel. I want to give up before I even, you know, embrace the idea that there were possibilities. In that moment, uh-uh. Have you been there? Have you been there? I know you have. Where we feel very alone, very responsible. See, that's my, my buzzword, very responsible. Yes, a lot of fear, a lot of tears, a lot of despair. And then, thank you, God. Anybody see the movie Moonstruck? Yeah. Remember Cher? Some kind of thing was going on, and she smacks the guy in the cheek, and she said, snap out of it. <laughs> snap out of it. So I had my snap out of it moment. Had a moment of insanity, didn't last very long. And then I had my snap out of it moment where I remembered, see, this is a thing. Wait a minute. Wait just a doggone minute, as my old Aunt Margaret would say. Wait just a doggone minute. You know what? I have a choice. I know the truth. I have basic trust in the universe to support my journey and this community's journey and my family's journey and everybody's journey. I know that at the deepest level of my being. And you know what? I just forgot momentarily in the midst of fear and despair. And once that happened, once I remembered the truth, all of a sudden, I was open to grace and the activity of the divine within the experience. And I got it. Oh, that's right. I teach this. Thy will, not my will, be done. I teach this. How could I forget this in this moment of despair? So then I am at a choice point, and this is all of our choice points. No matter what's going on, what icky thing is showing up, do we get bogged down with whatever this thing is, or do we open up and progress through it? And the unfolding aspect of our journey invites us to progress through it, to know that everything will be okay. Do we know how it's going to be okay? Uh-uh. Do we know how it's going to look? Probably not. Do we know for sure it's probably going to look different than our ideas? Oh yeah, probably going to look very different. But what I know about this is that part of my public meltdown was grace. And the reason it was grace is because I think I frightened a lot of people because I try to hold it together so much. And here I am falling apart. And my little friend Glenda was more worried about me than she was worried about our problem. Does that make sense? And so it's like our interest net, this idea that we're all jewels and we reflect each other. And when one of us cries, we all get salt on our shoulders. And when one net, one little string of that net gets pulled and plucked, the whole thing starts to vibrate. And then it starts to work together. Well, you know what? Even though I was in the recovery process of my meltdown thing, 
Glenda did her own meltdown at home in private. She wouldn't have to talk about it because, you know, she wasn't in public. <laughs> she did talk about it this morning, but she wasn't in public, so she didn't have to, like I do, because I was in public. And you know what? But she opened a guidance, and guess what? We didn't have to look for a, a chapel. We didn't have to look for Common Ground's next place. You know why? Because through grace and through her openness, it was delivered to her through guidance. Here it is. There's your new place. I mean, within a week, we had a whole new place signed, lease ready to go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. This is how it works. When one of us, you know, kind of gets a little shaky, then we all work together, and it all comes out. See, we all have those, oh, no, not this moments, don't we? Don't we? I think so. And we can either choose to unfold with it, and let it be what it is and take the next indicated step and have a positive, optimistic attitude about whatever that thing is. Or we can fixate on the negative experience. We can fixate on the diagnosis. We can fixate on our bank account that doesn't look so good. We can fixate on the shattered relationships. We can fixate on the custody issues with you know, the, the court system, whatever that thing looks like. We can fixate on it or we can unfold with it. And let me tell you, it feels different. If you fixate on, on the negative, it feels way different than if you're unfolding with the process. We don't have to like it. You don't have to like it. But we have to see how things are and then get into some sort of harmony or balance with whatever that thing is. It's the Buddhist idea of equanimity. Find that, that middle path, that balance point, where we're not going to be constantly knocked off center when this stuff starts unfolding around us all the time move beyond the meltdowns, move beyond the places that are stuck, move beyond the agitated, reactive places that just completely paralyze us so that we can rekindle this optimistic attitude, this joyful attitude, this trust in the moment that whatever it is, it's unfolding for a purpose, a holy purpose. See, the antidote to all of this is holy hope. It's what we've talked about. Almas teaches facets of unity, the holy ideas. This antidote is this holy hope that we lit the candle today for hope. It's the antidote to those oh no moments. This is what opens us up to the possibilities, to the love, to the grace in the moment, so that we can actually be optimistic about life in general and know that everything is unfolding in its own way that it's all got a divine plan, and then that's all going to be okay. Now, see, part of this is we can't hope for something specific. We just hope for the highest and best outcome, whatever that is, that thy will peace. Just allow it to unfold the best way it can. And then we can just relax and go with the flow. Just relax and go with the flow. So, here's your invitation. Remember who you are. Remember that you are a unique expression of the activity of God. You are God's living enterprise. At the very core of your being, you are that. And be willing to embrace your humanity. Embrace who you are within that. All of it, as you are, meltdowns and all, anger and all, despair and all. Whatever it is, just embrace it all and allow life to unfold for you in that moment at every level of your life. This is the truth, folks, and you can take it from me, and this is the truth. Life will constantly unfold and bring you an unexpected opportunity to embrace something else. It's the way of it. We are in a dynamic, creative universe, and it's always going to bring you something new. And you get a choice. You can either unfold with it, grow through it, transform through it, evolve through it, or you can fixate on the negativity of the problem itself and get stuck right there and not have any opportunity to move forward. Everything is and will be okay. I don't care what you're going through. Everything is and will be okay. And I know that because it's all God. And the divine is part of every single thing that's going on. 
So when we allow life to unfold on its own, and we can be fully present with that, this is where we actually get to live the invitation of Panache de Say's book, to live with passion, with purpose, and with joy. Thank you for listening. <laughs>